I like to start things off with a quote. Maya Angelou said, you will face many defeats in life, but never let yourself be defeated. And this is an exciting time in my life, is, is uh, you, were, you heard, I'm recently married. I've been by myself for 30 years, so this is a whole adjustment for me. But that, that handsome man over there in the white jacket that helped me up the stairs. And, and if you all saw me standing up, it wasn't because I thought I was cute, which I do look cute, but it wasn't just because I thought I was cute. I bought this dress a couple of months before we got married and had some room to spare. But after the honeymoon and being in, in Italy, he had to put his knee in my back like a suitcase and <laughs> zip this dress up tonight. So that's why I've been standing up a lot, because, yeah. So he's broken in real quick on what a husband's supposed to do. <laughs> also, as, as you heard, um, I am a successful businesswoman, city councilwoman, published author, and my documentary. And I look and sound confident, right? And I am, but however, if you had known me before, that wasn't always the picture. I was clueless to what my self-worth was. I was told that I was ugly. I was told that I wasn't smart. And if you aren't careful, you'll start believing what other people say. You'll let them dictate the value of who you are. And so, like I said, for years I allowed other people to do that. I settled in substan substandard relationships because I felt I wasn't good enough. I felt I should just be happy that that person or whoever hired me on a job, that they hired me or that they dated me. You know, and I look back now and I realize that I was the one that enhanced their value. I once had a manager that told me I would never go any further. I was so excited. I had been on this job for about seven years, hadn't missed any work, had good performance evaluations. And so when this opportunity came available, I went in his office and asked if I could have an application to fill out for this position. He said, no. And I said, no. He said, no, you should just be happy that we hired you and you'll never go any further. But in actuality, his words were a blessing because I probably would not have decided, I'm not gonna let anybody else dictate my life. And I probably would have just stayed in that moment forever thinking, well, I guess I should be happy that he hired me. I started that job making $4.08 an hour. And later on, I ended up starting my own company, Sips Consults, where I turned that $4.08 hour no into a multi-million dollar company. Thank you. So has anybody seen the movie Alice with Kiki Palmer in common? So in, in the, if though, for those of you that haven't seen Alice, Alice and her family were slaves in this plantation in Georgia, or so they thought. They were beaten, traded and raped. One day after Alice saw her husband shot and she thought he was, he was dead, out of rage uh, and anger, she ran away. Alice ran so far in the woods until she couldn't run any further and she ran out into the street and she was almost hit by a semi. You heard me say Plantation, Georgia. She later learned that it was 1973. And once she was aware that slavery didn't exist because Alice was taught to read because she read to her slave master's son. But once she started to read and understood emancipation and, you know, and all these women, she saw magazines and she saw on television, she started to empower herself. And she decided to go back and to free her parents and the rest of the slaves. When she went back, she found Paul, the slave owner. And she asked Paul, how could you do this? How could you do this knowing that slavery doesn't even exist? Paul's comment was, I never told anyone they couldn't leave. So I say, how many of you are enslaved 
because you don't ask questions, because you are afraid. Someone told you that this is as good as it gets, and you just accept that. And so you just kind of settle into whatever that cause may be, or that situation may be. But when uh, doors close in your life, how many of you is actually standing there begging, knocking on that door, asking that door to reopen? Because I used to do that. But I've learned through my life's journey that if those doors close, that might be a good thing. Because that makes us stop, reevaluate whatever's going on, and maybe realize that that door was closed for a reason, and it's time to go through another door. And sometimes we settle, I think it was Rudy that said something about be careful on the dance floor because of your age. But sometimes we settle because we think we're too old. C.S. Lewis said, you are never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. I started college at 30 and didn't receive my master's until I was 45. It took me 15 years because by then I had bills and responsibilities, but I did it. So I say that to say, you're never too old. It doesn't matter how long it takes. The finish line is what's important. Thank you. Someone asked me one time, if you could change something in your life, what would you have changed? And my response was that each of those experiences, whether happy or sad, good or bad, it made me the person that I am today. Now, when I look back, I probably wouldn't have stayed in some of those situations as long. I went to a graduation a couple of weeks ago, and one of the young ladies said that you miss 100% of the shots that you didn't take. Kind of deep, huh? I say, be intentional. Let me hear you say that. Be intentional. Be intentional. I've also learned that you can't change people. You can only change yourself. I used to send this letter out every year. And for those of you that know me, know about the letter. My birthday is in December, 12th month of the year. And every December, I used to reflect on the year. So I'd look at the uh, people in my life. I look at the situations, whether it was a job, whether it was a widget or whatever that was. So the things that worked well, I said, well, I'll keep these on and, you know, and try to enhance them. But relationships, this was my letter, unfortunately. It went like this. Dear Tani, <laughs> 2023 was a great year. However, if you're receiving this letter, you know you will not be a part of my 2024. Please do not call me, email, text me, write me. We didn't have Twitter and Facebook and all that Instagram when I was doing this letter. But one of the things I realized after sending this letter out for a few years, the only thing constant was me. I was a common denominator. And so I said, I have a problem with me if I have to send a letter out every year dropping somebody from my life. So I decided I needed to be more selective with the people that I allow in this circle and the things that I do. And so I haven't sent a letter out maybe about 10 years. I know it's sad to say, but letters probably went for about 10 years before I figured it out. So there's a white card and a color card, index cards on the table. So I want each of you to get a white card and get a color card, pass them around, they're on the center of your table. And on the white card, I want you to write down a goal. I don't care how small, but a, a something that you said you wanna do and you just have not done. On that color piece of paper, I want you to write down something that is a barrier, whether it's creating you know, your heart to be heavy, whether it's creating you from moving, and usually if your heart is heavy, that's creating you from moving to your next step. But, you know, it's just something that, uh, something that I really, I feel is important uh, for us that are stuck, stuck on reaching that next goal, are stuck on letting something go. And on the, um, the white piece of paper, I want you to go back and look at it, 
within the next few weeks or so and say, I'm on track to, to do this. On that other one, whatever that thing was that you need to let go, throw it in, your, in the trash before you leave. Let it go. <laughs> I want to leave you with this thought. Your life is like a movie. You are the writer and the producer. If you don't like the script, cut and rewrite. It's your journey. Make it a great one. Thank you.